Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I realize the lighting may not be as good as we, ha we would like. I am working on getting a whiteboard, but until then, we are going to move on. And today we're gonna talk about sectional properties. This is gonna be very important. It's talked about a lot in your statics classes. You're gonna need it for design. You're gonna need it for analysis. You're gonna need it for a lot of things. So our goals of today just to get straight to the point, we want to find the centroidal axis. You might have heard it as the NA, which is the neutral axis. Then we are going to find moment of inertia, which is this I thing, right? That you see everywhere. Okay, let's draw some generic I-beam. You're gonna deal with I-beams a lot in your career and in school, so why not? You can also do it on a bunch of other shapes. It gets a little bit more difficult when you talk about parallel axis theorems, but we'll get there in a sec. So our centroid, right? which is how we know to get to the plastic neutral axis, is gonna be the summation of a y bar over the summation of a. What does this mean? Well, this is our goal. How do we get there? A good question. Let's break it apart into shapes. This is gonna be shape one, shape two, shape three. And I'm gonna call this section. Make a little table for myself. Section one, section two, section three. I am going to make an area, which is inches squared. A Y bar, which is gonna be in inches. And an A Y bar, which is gonna be in inches cubed. Okay. I challenge you to find straighter lines anywhere else. Moving on. For all the anal people. There we go. It's a box now, right? Okay. So let's just give the, this thing some dimensions. Let's give this a thickness of flange of, I don't know, an inch. Another thickness of flange is an inch. Let's give this a total depth of six. And let's give, just to make the numbers easy, thickness of web an inch. And let's call this right here, our thickness of flange, let's make it, I don't know, two inches. Section one, what's the area? Two times one, groundbreaking. Section two, area. One times six minus one minus one gives us this length, which is what? Four, four times one is four. Section three, one times two is two. Um, yeah, Y bar, what's Y bar? Well, Y bar is the center of each section from a reference point. You can do it from the top or the bottom, doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. You'll notice that's a common theme in engineering. You could do whatever you want as long as it's consistent. I like to do it from the bottom because that's how I've always done it. So, this is what we're looking for. Just to draw it out for all the visual people because I'm definitely a visual person. Again, I challenge you to find straighter lines. All right. All right. Our Y bar for our number one shape, what is that? Well, from here to here, it's basically six minus half of that, so call that five and a half. 
our two, what is that? Well, it's going to be half of this, which is, well, it's going to be this whole thing, which is one and half of that, which is two. So it's going to be three. Section three, what's that? Well, it's just half of that. So it's just a half, right? Inches. Let's multiply these together. Five and a half and two, 11, right? Three and four is 12. That's one. Now let's find the centroid. Let's go back to this guy. Okay. AY bars, summation. All right, summation. 13 plus that, 23 inches cubed. Area. eight inches squared and if we uh, all right what did we do here let's see um, Something's okay, that's what I did. I can't do math. 24. So this is 24 over 8 gives me 3 inches. So you say, okay, we found our neutral axis at 3 inches. The reason why I paused, and this is the way I checked it in my head, which I knew I made a mistake, which you guys can too. This is a symmetric cross section. Your flange thicknesses are the same. And your flange widths are the same. Therefore, if somebody says, gee, what's the centroid? Well, it's just half. So six divided by two and you're done. Three inches, that's how you check. This is only for symmetric shapes. Can't stress that enough. Only for symmetric shapes. If this becomes a, a three and this is still two, you can't do it. Thicknesses change, you can't do it. Symmetric shapes. All right, so that's our first goal done. Moment of inertia, wow, what's that? That looks pretty scary. I wonder what that is. Turns out it's pretty easy. BD cubed over 12 plus AD squared. Please don't ever forget the AD squared. This is called the parallel axis theorem. It makes a lot of sense if you crack open a textbook and you read about the mathematics involved, it makes a lot of sense. But without getting all calculusy, it'll make sense when Kind of break it down to. So we said the centroid's at three, right? So what does that mean? This from bottom, right? Because that's where we did it from. C is three inches. Great. So our I1 of our first shape here, this shape, B two inches. D, one inch, cubed over 12, plus area, two inches squared. D, what's our D? Our D is our point from the center of the section to the centroid of the total section. So what's that? Well, if that's three, this gotta be three. And if we want it here, and that's an inch, it's half an inch here. So three minus half an inch is two and a half inches squared. 
okay? I2 equals I2 B one inch D four inches cubed over 12 plus area four inches squared. What's our D? Hmm. Well, looks like they're both at the same point. So our D gotta be zero. What's zero squared? Zero, what's zero times that? Zero. Ah, parallel axis kind of makes sense now, huh? We have this shape and this piece that gives us the length it's cubed by a, by a four cubed, which is way bigger than a one cubed. So this is what we're getting a lot of our bending resistance from. But since it's about the X axis, since it's about bending about this X axis, there's no D, but this gives us all our strength basically. I three. What does that equal? Same as I want, by symmetry, right? You have the same area, so you're gonna have the same moment of inertia, and your D is gonna be exactly the same because again, symmetrical. So once you do the math for all this, you just add them together, summations of I which equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. Everybody here knows how to punch things into the calculator. I will not do that because it's a waste of my time and pointless. Just figure out this is, multiply by two and add it to this. You got your moment of inertia. What is moment of inertia? Resistance to bending. It's so a section's resistance to bending. Why is that important? I said you see it a lot. One instance where you're gonna see this, for example, in a lot of design problems, which we're gonna get to in other videos, you have things modeled as a simply supported beam with a uniform distributed load, omega, some L. And with a lot of design, something that always comes up is deflection. And usually you'll have some allowable deflection. This deflects under load, and obviously this is your deflection, right? In this scenario, you know, you have WL to the fourth over 384 EI. That's the deflection for a simply supported beam. Another design, you know, you know your bending stress is your moment over your section modulus or your M Y over I. So as you can see, pretty important, pretty important anytime you talk about bending. You know, anytime you talk about bending, you really wanna know about this x-axis, primarily that's when you're gonna bend it, um, how important this is. Now let's talk about something a little bit more important real quick, or a little important real quick. So this was with respect to the x-axis, which is way stronger than the y-axis. And how can you prove that? Well, you just flip it on its side, right? And now this becomes the Y, this becomes the X. And then, you know, just real quick, when you do the I, let's say I1, section one, section two, section three, your B is an inch, 
your D is two inches cubed over 12, plus your area, still two inches squared. Your D is from here to here, which we said is, um, well, no, sorry. That would be to the x-axis. We, we want to be about the y, right? So if you're about the y, that one, there is no parallel axis because there's you're not moving anywhere. You go here, same thing. You go here, same thing. So there's no parallel axis. You're just left with I1, I2 is basically, what was that? Four inches times an inch cubed over 12 and your I3 is I1. Again, calc that out and you'll find IX way bigger than IY. So what does that tell you? So this is called strong bending. That's called weak bending. And now you know why. Now you know why we always wanna orient this about the strong axis, this x-axis. So that's a little short video. There's so much more to talk about, but that's just in a nutshell how you can calculate something like this. And yeah, I could find something so easily done. Um, you know, if you look at this, for example, you know, I over Y is S. S is used a ton also. This is called the section modulus, where Y is the centroid. S is used a ton. I is used a ton. And anytime you talk about S in particular, what you're really talking about So this is what we call the elastic zone. This here is Fy. This slope is the Young's modulus. Stress over strain. So here you have yielding. Somewhere here you have rupture. In here, so you're gonna deal a lot with Fy. Over here, you're dealing with Fu. Hence again, these shapes. Go look in the AISC steel manual. There are associated Fy's and Fu's. Typically for an A992 grade 50 steel, used a lot, pretty common. You got 50 KSI, 65 KSI usually. Sometimes you might go higher, but for this specific one, I believe it's 65. I could be wrong on that, but you look in your manual. These are associated with different things based on what you wanna do with your members. Um, tension is an example with a tension member. You're going to have to check yielding, which would you would use this, and then rupture, which you would use this. Makes sense, right? Kind of went off on a tangent, but just to explain why this moment of inertia is so important, yet so easy to calculate, and it's not too hard. So just master these steps and you'll be on your way to just destroying tests and understanding exactly what it is that you're doing.